there are various abilities like fade and cleansing that do reduce uh, curse duration, though. But they're abilities, not items. I'll, oh, I guess if you had uh, treachery or something like that, the fade proc from it would work for that. And what crossbow am I, am I using? We are using Brisa do Kayanon, which is a mispronunciation. <laughs> But also, it's, it used to be really popular back whenever the um, piercing worked properly on Guided Arrow. And then they nerfed the crap out of it. But basically, you used to be able to throw a Neff in it and get Guided Arrow and just do knockback or get knockback gloves. And then just shoot piercing arrows and they pierce 97 million times because Bariza has a 100% pierce chance. And it would rip everything to pieces and destroy it. It's no longer overpowered. But it was fairly fun. And we are going to be using this as our javelin since I haven't gotten anything better. We might... Do we want to go fend Zon? No, we really don't. We're going to be going with uh, Charge Strike. But we could we could totally do a tanky fend Zon with that. And our next skill point is going into Guided Arrow. So let's see. We are almost another level in, so we will have Guided Arrow then. So we'll have ENF for that. Is Wind Force still top tier for a bow? I prefer Faith, personally. Uh, personal equipped faith with a might mercenary. The alternative is to use wind force with a faith act one mercenary. But I personally prefer that. But as far as PvP goes, wind force does actually have a use uh, versus faith. But that's a different kind of discussion. I am not up to date on the current PvP meta. So, yeah. You'll have to take my opinion on that with a grain of salt. Cooley would be a better person to ask about the PvP aspect of it. Uh, as far as other stuff, we're actually doing fairly solid, aren't we? Yeah, we, we're making good time. 30 minutes in, we're already just halfway done with the act. And I might add some more stream days to that, but right now we are sticking with Tuesday and Saturday. All-time favorite build for a casual playthrough, Bone Necro. It, I, I, I'm a Necro player, and that is probably the most relaxing build that, for me at least, to just play through. It's not super fast. It's not, like, the best way to get through the game in the quickest way possible, but just it's super survivable. I can do whatever I want while playing with it. I can drop out Bone Wall to keep things away from me. I never have to worry about dying then. It's just all kinds of nice. You just want a good bow for a hybrid switch from Titans? Um, It depends on what kind of hybrid you're going to want to be. Because there's actually a few options, believe it or not. There, there's, there are a few bow options for hybrid approaches. Faith is just a good safe one if you're going to be using like Strafe as your hybrid thing. Um, for... Let's see, what else do we actually want? To, oh yeah, we have Guided Arrow. Let's go ahead and grab that. E and F. Let's go ahead and grab a little bit of vitality because we could use some. But basically, I would be for the um, bow. If you're going fire arrow, you'd probably want the lay. I think it's laying of hands. No, that's gloves. I have forgotten the name of it. I was just using it earlier as well on a sword. But the Holy Fire Rune Word is the one I'm thinking of. The Holy Fire Weapon Rune Word is a really good one for a swap if you're using Fire Arrow. If you're using Cold Arrow, Ice is a good swap. There's options. It just depends on what bow you want. Um, what style Necro goes well with an Oradin? It depends on what kind of Oradin you're talking about. If you're talking the just standard damage Oradins that are just a tanky zealot with elemental damage, then usually it's going to be a summoner necro with a lot of curse focus. So you can kind of keep them protected. And then you can use lower resist to make their their auras do more damage. Um, yeah, poison is another good option. Generally, it depends on how tanky your little friend is, though. Because... If you're going poison, then if your paladin falls, then you have no protection whatsoever. 
But you could always do a poison summon hybrid. It's There's plenty of points there for it. And as far as the... You're trying fishy for the first time? Awesome. It's a, not a bad build. I'm I'm not a huge fishy mancer person. I, I get why it works. I get why people love it. I, I love the summons, but I... I don't like swapping my skills 95 million times. So whenever the change for the skill bar comes out, I'll definitely be considering it a bit more. But, and what I would I recommend for a hybrid switch? Hmm, that's a tough one. Because there's quite a few varieties of hybrid. Like this one, we're going with a multi-shot Breeza and a charge strike, which is an uncommon one. The most common ones are going to be ice arrow with poison javelins or... Sometimes Ice Arrow with Lightning Javelins. Sometimes. L Ice Arrow is generally what people just kind of default to for their bows, unless they really want to go with some physical damage, which is not a bad idea. Going physical damage is with, say, like a Faith Bow and Strafe is really damn strong. <laughs> and I think people kind of underestimate it, but it's not really that common to see. Going for your first playthrough, thanks. Ah, uh, hopefully it goes well. Uh, but yeah, as long as you have a point in all curses, any necromancer is fine with an Oridin. Just use the uh, lower resist whenever they need the elemental damage. Fishy's a summoner that relies on mercenary. Um, Fishy is basically based around summons and corpse explosion. You drop amp damage, you usually have a might mercenary for making the summons a lot stronger, and you just kind of nuke things that way. So let's freeze your little friends, my dudes. And yes, you can freeze minions, you cannot freeze the boss mob, though. So, we're dodging that. Hopefully you enjoy the experience, none of us. And hopefully it goes well. Speaking of enjoying the experience, I have started releasing the... Uh, New first strikes over on their own dedicated channel. So I'm getting a lot of experiences with new it's games. Locked. Was really surprised by Sands of Aura. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I gotta say that one actually surprised me. It, it's a lot better than it was in the early demos. They have fixed a lot of the problems I had with it. You thought all summoners would use corpse explode? I mean, every necromancer that has any points into the uh, poison bone tree uses corpse explosion at least in some form or fashion. Personally, I uh, prefer the approach of just getting one point in it and letting the plus skills give me the range that I need on it, and then using all my points to make everything else kill faster, because more points into Corpse Explosion, as long as you have enough plus skills, are kind of pointless. You don't really get enough of a boost to it unless you really just don't have those plus skills to begin with, because you generally just need it big enough to deal with the current pack. Unless you're in something really wide open like cows. Uh, you recently just got Hellrat crossbow. Is it a useless weapon or some use? I mean, everything has a use. I, I can't really... I mean, even like terrible things have a use. But there is not a build that relies on Hellrat, no. It's more of a weapon that you use as a transition. It's not going to be your end game option as far as like best in slot or anything like that. Strict summoner tree playthrough all the way through hell. You would would you even let me have curses? If I if I didn't have curses, that would actually be painful. <laughs> let me have my amp damage at the very least. And that becomes a lot easier. But you'll notice that I don't use corpse explosion a lot. That's because I kill fast enough without it. <laughs> Corpse Explosion is more for like those little tough little corners of the web, not web, of the world that are being a little troublesome. I should say, there isn't a build with Hellrack that I'm aware of. I should probably state that because someone will be like, well, I've got this Hellrack build that makes it extremely powerful. And I'm like, oh, oh, I did not know. There, there isn't a single person who knows every single build possible in the game, especially whenever you start dealing with, like, more esoteric items. But, honestly, Hellrack isn't that esoteric. Everyone's had one at some point or another. Painful and boring. Eh, 
I don't find summoners that boring, but in normal they can be a little bit arduous getting through Diablo and stuff. Uh, it's abysmally slow for killing. Yeah, you need you need at the very least curses. With curses, you can actually get through stuff fairly quickly, and that's one reason why we didn't use Corpse Explosion that much on the Summon Necromancer is because we were going fast enough that I could actually go through, have the chats that we're doing in the comments and stuff like that, and in the uh, live chat there. We are actually able to get through that and not have to worry about dealing with nonsense. Like, rushing super quickly through stuff. Because personally, while going fast has its advantages, and it's very nice, I don't care. <laughs> I would rather enjoy the game and actually be able to chat with all of you than necessarily go through the game at breakneck speeds and get through it in like an hour. Which, actually, you can't get through it in an hour unless you're a sorceress, but eh. Although assassins might be able to now. They, they might have had one that crossed the hour mark for normal difficulty, at least. 100% uh, your Diablo and Bale fights in normal were like 12-minute wars of attrition. Yeah, normal difficulty for a summoner is not friendly feeling. Because you your, your units will just die. In Nightmare, you've gotten enough durability between them. Like, behind them, sorry. By then, to not have to worry about it. But in... Oh, jeez. You guys need to just go away. Thank you. How dare you not know every single build option in D2? <laughs> Not even Llama knows every build in D2, and he's done speedrunning, which honestly opens you up to more build options, because you have less concern with the long-term viability of a build, as opposed to just getting through a specific area, which is one reason why speedrunning builds are not always good builds. Oh no, that's true of any game though, uh, especially ones where you have glitches and stuff like that in the game. The strategies that are good for speedrunning are not always good for just playing through the game. Um, once you got Decrepify, though, boss fights were at least humorous. <laughs> Decrepify, Clay Golem, and a Holy Freeze Mercenary is hilarious. I have to give you that one. Is it the best thing ever? In my opinion, not really unless you have, like, the right setup for it, which is a whole bunch of really high plus skills. And, ew, I did not realize we still had something alive there. But they are dead now. And yes, we are fairly strong right now. But yeah, for me, I generally prefer the Might, Amp, and um, that kind of stuff on my character. Diablo on Prozac. <laughs> oh, Snail Diablo. <laughs> he got a snail trail. Oh, that is gross. I apologize. Three, four, five... We are killing some things. And I keep hearing them dying in there. We're not getting as much mana leech as I would like from that, but it's fine. Oh, hi. Yeah, good luck getting through that Valkyrie. That's going to be a bit of a challenge for you. And yeah, we're getting a ton of XP from these. That is a lot. Oh, hey, a bolt. Yay, we don't have to worry about it anymore. We gotta restack. We don't even have to go back to town if we don't want to, but we're gonna turn in Lamb Essence anyway. It's five stat points. We'll probably get to Travancle first, though. But yeah, slowing enemies down is very powerful in this game, mainly because they have animations that they do and stuff, but most enemies actually have a active animation, and then they do the whole... I'm trying to think of how to explain it. They have a sort of like pseudo idle. They're, it's not completely idle. It's not like they're just standing around picking their butts. But it's one of those things where they have a time between when they attack. Unless they're like the frenzy enemies and stuff like that. And usually they'll, they still have a moment where they'll interrupt themselves. Like these guys you'll see will sometimes attack and then wander off to the side to go after a di different target. Let's see. Question, if I have only crappy and budget gear and have a source able to farm Mephisto, but not Chaos or Worldstone Keep quickly, should your second character be a Smiter or a Hammerden? Hammerden. Unless you are going after Ubers specifically, I would 100% recommend Hammerden. Fun fact, you can have both in one character. <laughs> Especially after you reach about level 80, you can run both. 
because once you get all the synergies and concentration and all that up and running, you can you are fine to go into just one point and smite and rest into holy shield and you're you're good to go. And you have just an easily swap over to smiter if you need to do ubers and then you have blessed hammer to do the rest. Out of all the characters summon skills, what is your favorite? Ooh. I mean, I could go the easy answer and go with Valkyrie and say it's because it's the strongest. But my favorite, if I'm not going purely on strength, is probably... I would say either Shadow Warrior or Iron Golem. Mainly because they have some quirky, weird uses that most people don't acknowledge. Hey, Daladon, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Hopefully life is treating you well. Um, reviving Erdars for their stun lock. Erdars are fun. If we're talking about pure revive summons, yeah, definitely Erdars or um, council members are a lot. Of, I have a fascination with reviving council members. Don't hate me for this. Oh, I hate Carrion Vine. I mean, it's not a bad thing to actually have one point in for dealing with things that use corpses, such as reviving them or exploding them, but it's not reliable enough for that. It's okay, Dallin. I understand what... I understand being busy, trust me. I have been trying to work out a schedule to... For those of you that know, don't know, I have officially started my sixth channel. <laughs> I now have six. Uh, this is the largest one still, but I have officially started my sixth channel. So I understand being busy. If you guys are wondering why I don't release videos every day, that's part of it. Uh, currently working on getting First Strike up and running smoothly. And then we'll go back to having First Strike being a regular thing. Videos on here. We'll have the art channels going. I have not started the seventh channel. would be the scripted channel for those. But, yeah. I'm trying to turn YouTube into an actual survivable resource. Which, it's not quite there yet, in case you guys are wondering. I do not make enough to make a living off of this. Please don't abandon the drawing channel. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, I, I don't plan on abandoning it. But it does take a backseat to this one, because this is actually the main thing that's keeping me from completely cratering my savings while I'm currently unemployed. So, I have to do... This one takes priority. Terriel's Might Iron Golem, the peak of richness. Oh, that would be a terrible Iron Golem, too. Oh, that would be gross. You have a waste management plan deadline for 30th of November. Oh, that that is... That's a big one. Uh, if your Firewall Orb Sorceress can't farm chaos in a reasonable time... Uh, with only about plus five all skills, is that your fault? Or do you just need better gear? It depends on if you're playing on console or not. On console, Firewall is ass. I mean, it's not the worst thing ever, but the fact that it summons on the enemies, it's just gross. Oh, uh, let's... Oh, ow! You bastards! Stop! I didn't mean to die! No. Oh, okay, we didn't die. So we have Guided Arrow. It's 7.2 mana per cast. We're fine with that. Let's go ahead and keep going, Charge Strike. Um, Six? You're crazy. Eh. Two of those are not necessarily reused content. They are different accessibility of similar content. So two of those are just nothing to manage. I have Let's Play Everything, this channel... The First Strike channel that just started, the two support channels for First Strike and Let's Play Everything, and the art channel. Those are the official channels that I currently have running in some capacity. Feel your orb doesn't kill fast enough? The trick to orb is if you're dealing with a large group and you're trying to trim them down, you aim towards the outside. Like if there was a group right here, I would aim here or here. If there's a single target in there that I'm trying to get rid of, like say there's a unique with a pack around them, I would aim to have the orb pop, which would be about there, on the big guy. Um, Is the Alzerath... Okay, Alzerath is the specs you run Diablo in because... Can't explain why, but I feel the optics on this is way better now. 
that I can actually play or watch it. Um, this is D2R. But I haven't changed any of my settings. Oh, the in-Discord thing. On the Discord end of things, I would need to actually be paying monthly for Discord to actually be able to stream on there. Which is... I, I've, tempted, I've been tempted to put that as a Patreon stretch goal to have, like, Discord nights. But that is up in the air. Currently, the Patreon does not quite get enough to offset the cost, so... Should you prioritize orb or firewall in that hybrid? Honestly, they're both low investment skills, so it's whichever you prefer. Generally speaking, I would favor orb personally, but I'm not a huge firewall fan. But high damage firewall is fun, but neither of them get huge boosts from their synergy, so you might just want to get orb, get firewall, and then choose something you can spam. Your English deteriorates after 3 a.m. Understandable. And it, I, it was perfectly legible, so I understood that. Oh, if my setup is on Discord? Um, no, it's not. But I could I could put it on there. Oh, wait. Yeah, actually, it might be. Let me check. I, I might have left that up. I know I was doing some reorganization on there. Let's see. I'm going to scroll down to where it would be. If it's anywhere, it's in hardware information. Yeah, I have hardware information in there. It would be... Scroll down below the files section, and there's a hardware slash collection, and it's in hardware information. That's my setup. Uh, and yeah, it is the, the main PC is the one that I'm using right now. The backup rig is the one that's currently broken that I'm trying to fix. So let's see. Blizzard on console is also ass. Yeah, anything where you actually have to position it properly to have it work well is going to be butt on console. Whereas if it's something that you can just point and shoot, it's going to be a lot better. You're having trouble with bail on your necro. Any tips? Uh, normal bail, nightmare bail, hell bail. What kind of necro build? Firewall works, it's just not as good on console. And yeah, Orb is loses its ground a lot on high player counts because it just it, it does a lot of damage, but you have to aim it just right. But other skills will generally do a lot more damage per proc. So And generally Sorceress in general doesn't scale super well unless you're doing things like Meteor. Or Blizzard or something like that. Where it's doing literally thousands of damage that are excessive in normal because it's only hitting one thing. But why don't I like Firewall? I mean, it's not the worst skill ever. It's just not my favorite skill. I prefer being able to, like, aim things properly. Um, let's go ahead and get some more multi-shots going in here. Can we kill some of these before they kill the Valkyrie? Probably not. Well, yeah, maybe. We might be able to get him before the Valkyrie dies. Hey! Yeah, you keep shooting that. Did we already kill everything? I, am overburdened. I think we might have. I know you're in there. Oh, it's down here. Okay, so it's there. Let's go ahead and grab that. Put it in there. We just need the rest of this. Normal and summon skellies. Yeah, that's going to be a pain in the ass fight. The trick is literally just Golem and Iron Maiden him is one option, which is Clay Golem and drop the Iron Maiden. Um, the other option is literally just teleport out of there, get some minions, go in, do a bit of damage, town portal back out, rinse and repeat. The thing is, he's going to take a while to do it, but at least act bosses don't heal, so you can just rinse and repeat as much as you want. Blizz Baller's what you run, kills everything pretty much, and holds up okay on high PC. The only thing I don't like about Blizz Baller, well, actually, there's two things. Two, the two things I don't like about it is one, they're both delay skills. And that's another reason why I'm not huge on Firewall, is usually it's paired with another delay skill. 
which frustrates the crap out of me because I like to be able to cast and spam something to keep my attention on the game. So that is a thing. And as far as the... And it's a similar situation for Blizz Orb where it's just, you, you I want to be spamming something. I want to be actually doing something as we fight. <laughs> Not just running around in circles waiting for a cooldown. Um, as far as focusing on skeletons and not mastery, uh, that's a contentious point. For uh, maximum damage, yes, that is correct. You want more skeletons. For actual playthrough, against normal enemies, yes, more skeletons is good. Against bosses, it's a mixed bag. There's a reason why they use the Golem Iron Maiden trick against bosses with the various summoner builds that do focus in on maximizing the number of summons. And let's not... Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say something right now. I agree with you. But let's not go there. <laughs> I think you know who I'm talking to. I don't want to have that conversation on stream. So let's see. Alcor plus Necro plus be equals best D2 people. <laughs> best D2 couple, sorry. Uh, Alcor. Uh, I don't know. I always thought the Necromancer was more Neelithaki. Tacky Neelithaki. So let's go ahead and drop that. All your boss fights in normal was just Iron Maiden and Golem. Yep. If, if you are running Summoner in normal, that's pretty much what you're going to be running into unless you build specifically towards the bosses. So we'll toss that in there for now, and we'll go get ourselves the heart, because that's what we have left. The thing I like about Alcor, by the way, he still isn't in this game. We actually have a short that's dedicated to it. He has the best, the best voice line in the game, but it was cut. It was cut. <laughs> His best thing was cut. <laughs> it pisses me off. Oh... It uses the punchline ash hole, for God's sake. <laughs> That's why I like Alcor. That said, um, yeah, never mind. <laughs> Wariv is the most evil one in the game, though. He's way more evil than Neelithek. Uh, what's worth your time to farm as a Hammerden? Chaos Sanctuary, generally, is the Hammerden home zone. And yes, you are. it's perfectly fine to... Uh, do the Chaos Sanctuary as a Hammered in without Enigma, because River of Flame is level 85 as well. Um, we have a short. It was one of the first shorts we released. So if you just go to the main channel page, go to the bottom, there is a section just for shorts. If you click on that one, you can view the full list of them, and it's going to be near the bottom of it. Druid, I mean, yeah, the characters have some good one-liners, but Ash Hole wins. <laughs> and also, um, Jamela has old person voices as well, but they aren't a thing. So let's go back to Bazaar. Yes, Wariv is the worst person in the game. He is pure evil. We, we had another stream where we kind of discussed that, but basically, you don't want to know what goes in in that caravan. Um. <laughs> yeah. That it, it's my head cannon ever since that stream that he is the most evil person in the game. There is something shady about that caravan. <laughs> I, I am glad you are enjoying the videos. Hopefully you will enjoy many more for years to come. Oh, let's see. Was he smoking the goods when with Geet or something? <laughs> People sleep on River of Flame. Yeah, River of Flame is a level 85 area. And it's one of the easiest ones to get to. You don't need to teleport to it. 
You just drop in and it's just murder central. And I think people really do sleep on it. It's one of my favorite farming areas. Well, Chaos Sanctuary is my favorite farming area, but you can you have to go through River of Flame to get there. The little like paths are considered River of Flame. And most of your unique mobs are actually going to be spawned on those paths up to Chaos Sanctuary, so. I love Chaos Sanctuary. Most of my offlining, as far as killing stuff, just randomly, is in Chaos Sanctuary unless I'm testing a build. So, like, if I'm just chilling, I am chilling in Chaos Sanctuary. I don't bother with ancient tunnels and stuff like that. I build characters that can do that or World Stone Keep. Where everything's level 85, I don't have to worry about having a freaking enigma to do it. You can enigma my balls. But, um... Let's go ahead and kill all that. Help you kill Diablo. Hit him in the face a lot of times. What class are you running, Jay? And I can actually give you some tips there. <laughs>